deepest that Michigan has made it in the NCAA tournament, of course, led by the great Naj Hillman, the All-American now with the Atlanta Dream in the WNBA, and also budding broadcaster Katie Meyer, year number 18 in Coral Gables, and the numbers tell the story. Her team locked and loaded again tonight, and this season we are underway. Our opening tap controlled by Michigan. And already you see the game plan for Miami, trying to make the touches to Brown really difficult so that Michigan can't get into their half-court offense. Delia hit the deck, a foul called against Williams, and that'll be her first. Michigan nine and five all time in the challenge. The Canes at six and six. We mentioned this is the last year of it. ACC will switch to an SEC challenge next season. Off the steal, here comes Destiny Hart. She'll get it back. The mid-range Jay is there. The make is not. And ripped away by Leah Brown. Leah Brown running the point this season for the Wolverines. And that's just a six foot plus point guard. Sees the floor so well. She's going to be key. Can she handle this Miami pressure here this evening? Cameron Williams inside. Michigan strikes first. Canes, Christy, you figure, want to go up and down and turn this into more of a track meet. Michigan so lethal in half court situations. First basket for the U, it's Haley Cavender. Absolutely. Katie Myers said, we can't allow this to be a half-court game. We can't allow Michigan to play at the three-point line. That's where their height can definitely exploit the undersized Hurricanes here this evening. So you're already in postseason form. I can feel it right now. Kaiser launching and connecting. That's postseason form. Emily Kaiser's just been on a tear. You think she's a post player, so you're worried about her in the paint, but she's been shooting the three extremely well also. Third make from downtown this season. A good look inside. Pindande strikes back. And these two teams are so similarly matched. You talk about turnovers for us. You talk about paint points. Opponents field goal percentage defense. The key today would be the pace. Can Miami get out and not have to face Michigan in the half-court defense? Pindande forced the steal. Williams bit out of control, outside to Harden. Pindande throws it up, gets it back, and she was fouled. Miami aggressive in the early going, trailing by just one, but free throws coming. And we talk a lot about Emily Kaiser and the low post play for Michigan, but Pindande has come to work here this evening, staying on the glass, getting position, earning herself a trip to the free throw line. Ola Pindande averaging 61% of stripe so far this year. She'll get one more. I can always tell when I'm working with coaches, former coaches, because anything weird that happens, there's always some emotional outburst as a result. Pindande missed the free throw. Christy thomas Cuddy looks down, frustrated, thinking about what that means for that player and that particular team at that moment. Hey, it's college athletics. Make your free throws, make your layups. But I think for <laughs> Miami to execute their game plan, they need to be able to set up that full court defense. And that's part of the whole free throw deal as well, obviously. Brown was fouled. Brown, not a true point guard, moved into that role this year at necessity for the Wolverines, and she does a great job of getting into the bodies of the defenders, so the Hurricane players have to play vertical and play smart here this evening. Bilia with an opening, the mid-range is short, Cavender the rebound. All sorts of great games played today as part of the challenge. How about the steal? That was Kaiser. And she hit the deck and a held ball. It'll go back to Miami. Kaiser, Michigan wants to hedge the on-ball screen. Kaiser's known to stay in here. The post player gets the loose ball. You got to love how she gets on the ground, sacrificing her body. And this is going to be key. Whether it's a hedge or a trap, you got to attack that post player and basically create numbers for your offense. High basketball IQ you saw it on display there from Emily Kaiser. Williams gets a touch on the wing. Quickly double team. And that's what I mean by you have to make Michigan pay for doubling the ball. Didn't do it there. Nolan with the steal. Brown with a skip pass. 
Bedelia lost the handle off the knee and out of bounds. Kind of a helter-skelter start for both sides. It's still early in this preseason. I know fans don't want to hear that, but it's still. Broadcasters <laughs> don't either. <laughs> Teams are getting a feel for who plays well in certain situations. This is by far one of the more high-pressure teams Michigan has played. Sands Air Force that they played last week down in Fort Myer, which forced them into a lot of turnovers. Kim Barnes and Rico told us we feel like that prepared us really well for this stifling Miami defense we'll face tonight. Cavender will pick up Brown full court. Michigan with a clear size advantage tonight. See if that becomes a factor. A kickball will stay on this end. Fifth all-time meeting between these two. The series tied at two wins apiece. You talk about the importance of defense for the U tonight. You see in Miami's wins versus their losses, how their defense has let them down and why that's such a big deal. It's not just about the opponent's high scoring. It is about the pressure it is putting on the half-court offense in Miami. Kaiser with a bounce. She's got five, the lead at two. Williams lost the handle. Ripped away by Brown. Maddie Nolan's got the three-point shot and the quick trigger now. Gavender left open. And poked out of bounds. It'll stay with the Canes. And that shot didn't go down for Cavender, but I like the pace there. I like that she was looking for a shot. Katie Meyer told us today, we need her to be more offensive-minded and to look for those pulls. Transfer from Fresno State, former Mountain West Conference Player of the Year. Left-handed layup is there. Area bets. I cringed there for a moment because I thought she was going to settle for the pull-up jumper, knowing she had that lane. She saw it turn the corner. Well, Cavender took a forearm right in the face from Kaiser. No whistle. And now foul underneath the basket. <laughs> Lee Stuck checking in, number 30 for Michigan. And a breather for Cameron Williams. Leah Brown shooting a couple at the strike. Also, Shea Dwyer on the court for the first time. Brown a 70% free throw shooter. As Christy told you, running the point this season. Don't forget, coming up this weekend, we have Duke and Carolina back on ACC Network, also on the ESPN app. Coming up Saturday, number 17, Duke hosting Boston College at Cameron Indoor. Sunday at 3, top 20, North Carolina back in action against Virginia Tech. Conference games are here. Make sure you check us out coming up this weekend. Dwyer working against Felia. The crossover. Cavender with a bounce pass. And an offensive foul. That'll be the first on Pindande. And what you're already seeing, just how strong the Michigan interior defense is. That time, Kaiser just moving her feet, and Pindande gets caught with that extension. First for 21 in white. Here's the full court pressure, and Dwyer's probably Miami's best on-ball defender. She will pressure Leah Brown. I think she's like lightning in a bottle. Katie Meyer puts her in, and you just feel the energy and the intensity raise up on the defensive end for the Hurricanes. Yeah, spark plug of sorts for sure. Kaiser attacking, lost the handle. Kane's in transition. And that pass sailing out of bounds. Expecting the cut by Cavender. The turnover. Really been impressed with Michigan's half court defense. The Miami guards have gotten a step on their first defender, but the help side has been there. And you're not seeing Miami guards consistently get to the rim. Wolverines coming off a comeback win against Baylor. Bears were number 21 in the country at the time of that dub. And our first media timeout, a two point lead for the visitors from Ann Arbor near the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Cole Gables. Auto owners and sure. Gables, Florida. The stats with these two programs this year, Christy, would tell you and indicate that these two teams are quite similar. However, 
I think this graphic is a little bit misleading because they truly operate in different ways, right? I think we've already seen that. Miami extending to the full court pressure, trying to turn you over. It's high risk, high reward because we've seen Michigan be able to get some looks at the basket once they beat the initial pressure. Michigan on the other end, half court defense. They've gotten beat initially, but the rotations behind that initial dribble or beating of the offense, Miami hasn't been able to capitalize. Michigan already in the bonus halfway through our first quarter. The ball was already in bounds, and they're going to allow the substitution to take place. Cameron Williams back on the floor. Latasha Lattimore checking in for the first time for the U. ACC Big Ten Challenge tied at five as it stands now. Got three more games left to conclude. This one actually the latest start. And by the time we're done tonight, it may come down to the outcome of this very matchup. Who wins the final ACC Big Ten Challenge? Inside and how about the finish by Dwyer? So one of the few times Miami's been able to get the step and continue and get to the rim to finish. How much of a toll will this take on Leah Brown having to deal with this kind of pressure for four quarters? And I think that's a misnomer when you talk about pressing teams is that there's just the immediate turnover. I think there's a lot a cumulative effect, especially right. on point guards to handle that. Especially for a point guard that really wasn't playing the point before this season. Well, and I'll go back to I think that's why the Air Force game is so huge for Michigan. Leah Brown played through that, had some turnovers in that game. Michigan was able to get the win, as they're hoping they can do here tonight as well. Filia with the hoop on one end, Dwyer with the response on the other. It's back to a two-point game. Filia, second leading score. Inside off the glass and short. It'll stay with Michigan. Greta Camp Schrader checking in for the first time. The maize and blue. And Hannah Cavender on the court. Twin sister, of course, of Haley Cavender, the transfers from Fresno State. Social media superstars. Do you think they give me some lessons? We need a lot of work on our social media accounts, so I would hope so. Feel you. Fade away from the baseline, and that was silky smooth. Feel you hasn't worked on her outside touch. I mean, a moment ago, it got knocked out of bounds, but that crossover is so quick for her. She's a tough matchup for anybody. Williams crossover the Hezzy. No bucket. Ophelia aggressive early to spin. Dwyer in transition, rejected. Kaiser. And Dwyer's going to have to realize she really has to have a clear lane to the basket to be able to get there and finish against the much taller Michigan players. Found it that first drive. Couldn't do it there. Kaiser, quick trigger, no. And tapped out of bounds and a fresh 20 for the Wolverines. Well, the one thing that these coaches are telling me to this point in the game is they know this is going to go into the fourth quarter. Both going to their benches here early in this first quarter, playing a lot of players. It's been a physical game. It's been an up-tempo affair. The block by Lattimore and swatted that one out of bounds. Well, if you're going to be high-pressure defense, you got to have room protectors. Lattimore with a swat away. The only thing Coach Katie Meyer probably wants is her to keep that ball alive for her team. Yeah, easier said than done, though. You can't <laughs> just reach up and grab it. Roy, coaches are greedy. Williams with a jump hook in traffic. The lead at six. Michigan now with its largest advantage, approaching the two-minute mark in the first. Jaleel Williams needs to get a touch here. Leading scorer without a point so far tonight. Shot clock under 10. Off the high ball screen. Williams bothered by Kaiser. And a turnover. Ahead to Matty Nolan. Three on one. Dwyer. Lattimore lost it. 
Somehow gets it back up and in. Back to a four-point lead. But Kaiser defensively has been surprisingly good tonight. Off the hands of Williams and out of bounds, and I say that because she's been active on the perimeter. 6-3, that's disrupted two different screen on the ball options for Miami already in this game, and that's where the guards just have to tighten up that dribble, and they've really got to attack that high shoulder and get by here, and I'll say it again, create numbers for your offense. If Michigan's going to try to trap you, you've got to get beyond that and attack. See, I could be a coach too. I put my coaching cap on right there and noticing the bigs outside guarding the smaller players and doing a great job. Turn around, no. That was Spearman off the mark. Back to Michigan. You didn't agree with me there, so I'm just going to end my coaching career after that one statement. I mean, let's see, Frank, if Emily Kaiser was on your team, you would be a really good coach. <laughs> I would still be coaching That's if right. I had Emily Kaiser. It's amazing how that works. <laughs> When the screen was coming for Cavender, she avoided it from Crockett. And a foul. Michigan in the bonus. 25 feet away from the rim. And we heard Katie Myers say today, shoot around. Like, what's the point in fouling this Michigan team when they're shooting 80%? Like, be smart, make them earn it from the field. Don't forget about Wednesday's featured women's basketball game right here on ACCN and the app. Elizabeth Kitley, number nine, Virginia Tech, take on Boston College on the road in Chestnut Hill. It's the first ACC matchup for both sides. Our coverage starts at 6 Eastern. Lead back to six. Williams has to get going. Well, it was just great team defense by Michigan. Kavanagh had the back door, but the weak side rotated over, so there was no pass for Williams to make. Anna Cavender bottled up. She escapes. Good look inside. And a traveling violation called on Williams. I asked Katie Mike today, what's that area of your team that needs to get better before ACC play? She goes, we're just fumbling so many balls. We've seen already twice down in the low post where it should have been clean, easy looks for the bigs. They haven't been able to convert. And that was a look for Spearman, not Williams down low. She turned it over. And with the shot clock off, another foul call. Aaliyah Brown is sitting right down on top of the end line. And the infraction called against the Canes. That'll go against Roberts. You know, if you're Michigan, you got to feel great. They came in tonight averaging 14 free throw attempts a game. These will already in the first quarter be number seven and eight. And looking for the seventh straight make. Brown connects. Started her career at Nebraska now, year number three with the maize and blue. And the Wolverines a perfect eight for eight at the line. Shot clock is off, nine and change to go in the first. And Kim Barnes Arico instructing her defense. Area vets against Felia. Backdoor cut. There it is. Dwyer could not get the bounce. And the Wolverines with their largest lead at eight. Ten minutes in. Here at Coral Gables, the ACC Big Ten Challenge. We are underway. It was the night before Christmas when all through the house. Not even personal fouls. Michigan to the bonus halfway through the first quarter. And Michigan, as a result, connecting on all eight of its free throw attempts. Really the difference so far. Well, and it's not just the eight free points. It's also how it's affected pace of play. It has slowed this game into where it favors Michigan in the half court especially. Wolverine basketball to start our second quarter. Area vets shaking up. Took a shot right in the mouth. Yeah, Cam, Cam Schrader tries to turn the corner off that on ball and just trying to create space for that off arm. Great call by the official. Veteran officiating crew tonight, Karen Prado, 
Katie Lukinic and Talisa Green. Katie, I did get the name right. <laughs> Inside, Williams off the mark. And a held ball, it'll stay on this end. What do you want to see difference, different from Miami offensively? Because you mentioned they're able to get to the rim in that first quarter, just couldn't finish with Michigan's size. I think you almost have to wait for that second rotation by the defense. You can't go first time drive because the bigs are just set and solid for Michigan. Crockett the steal, coast to coast, and she was fouled. Melissa Crockett, the freshman from Westfield, Indiana. That's a big foul on Destiny Harden. We asked Coach Meyer today, who has to stay on the floor for you? She said Destiny Harden because she can stretch the defense. They are transition dig. you got to get your chest between the offensive players and the basket. She gets called for Rodney. That's her second. She'll take a breather. Free throws for Crockett. Perfect this season. <laughs> Don't you tell me the announcer jinx isn't real Sean McDonough. It absolutely is. My apologies to Michigan fans. You're welcome, Miami. Crockett, one for two. That was Michigan's first miss tonight as well. Cavender back on the floor. Between the legs, mid-range is there for 14 and White. Twenty-two to fifteen. How about the cut, Crockett, and the finish? A little give and go action. And what I love about Crockett, as soon as she made the pass, she knew her defender was out of position and cut immediately to the basket. Smart basketball, Lattimore. Kane's get it back. Beautiful basketball. You want to move without the ball. Crockett, just a freshman, not showing it there. As soon as she makes the pass, she sees her defender go to the ball, so she cuts it right to the lane. Even better pass for the easy two. Oh, I love that high angle shot, Miami control room. That was beautiful. And we saw Michigan working on those cuts today at their shoot around. Cavender, second possession. She's connected in the second quarter. Why was Michigan working on it? Because of the high pressure. If you're going to face a team who is trying to deny you, you've got to use that pressure defense against them and cut back door. Haley Cavender with these four points our second period. Felia against Williams, great matchup. Felia on the attack, a little stop and pop. She's got six. <laughs> Look out, Big Ten. Felia's got that Beautiful mid-range pull-up jumper and so special because she knew not to over-penetrate there. Just stopped on the dime and knocked it in. Williams had 28 her last game. Has yet to crack the scoring column tonight for Miami. On cue, lost it out of bounds. Another turnover. That'll be turnover number 10 for the Canes. Now, don't forget this weekend, we have Duke and North Carolina back here on ACC Network on the men's side, also on the app. Number 17, Duke battles Boston College live from Cameron Indoor Saturday at 4 Eastern. Carolina on the road. Castle Coliseum to battle Virginia Tech. That's Sunday at 3 Eastern. Conference play is here at least for this coming weekend and a foul inside. And where you can see what Michigan's trying to do off the on-ball screen. They're not necessarily trying to turn the corner. They're trying to go up and then into the roller because they feel like there's not going to be the weak side to kind of basically cramp up the paint, and that allows Kaiser to go one-on-one. -on -one. with the rebound. Last foul was called on Pindande. That's her second. That Ariavet missed Williams on that left lane running in transition. Haley Cavender, left-handed layup, no bucket. Foul was on the floor. 
It's not the NBA yet. <laughs> I don't know. We see a lot of three-pointers these days. It kind of reminds me of Golden State. Pick your team that won a championship. Everybody launching threes from distance. Um, if you have Steph Curry, I think you make a lot more of those threes. Or though. Caitlin Clark or Deja Kelly. Maddie That's Nolan. True. Three minutes into the second quarter. Lead at nine. Good look inside. High low action under the basket and a chance for three for Latasha Lattimore. Yeah, nervous and scared didn't go up with it, but she knew better than me. She finds her mate Lattimore on the weak side. One of the few times the weak side of rot rotation by Michigan hasn't been there in time, and Lattimore gets it and keeps the ball away from Camp Schrader and goes up strong. Camp Schrader picks up her third foul in just seven minutes of action so far. And Lattimore at the stripe, 71% this season. Trying to trim this deficit down to six. And she will. You can feel Miami teetering, trying to find some momentum, a couple of stops. Well, the one thing I have seen in Dwyer. this early season is that Dwyer can pick a pocket for sure. But when you get a lead, you better put a team away. So many teams have been toyed with this season already. I remember North Carolina versus Oregon. And you have got to put a team away. And this is where Miami gets dangerous. They feed off of their defense. Nolan, the pump fake. And a three-second violation. We don't see that call too often. But it was the right call. And Dwyer just sizing up. Brown waits for her to go behind the back. She's there in the pocket waiting. And I love that she knocked it forward, knowing that she had the foot speed advantage over Brown. Haley Cavender fighting through. Leah Brown's defense are checking. It was Kaiser as well. Gaines with momentum for the first time. Lattimore well, hit the deck hard and grabbing her left knee. Oh, and in pain. Four point game. Lattimore, the sophomore out of Toronto. Injury timeout, we will step aside in Coral Gables. Four-point lead for Michigan. Back in Coral Cables, ACC Big Ten Challenge. Lattimore went down awkwardly underneath the rim, grabbing her knee in pain. Christy certainly don't want to speculate. And they're looking at knee area of her right leg. I mean, let him more unfortunately invisible pain still on the floor. And it's just unfortunate for Miami. They are still without the services of Kyla Oldacre, who was supposed to be a dominant low post. And I mean, they're very lean in the post as it is. Now, Canes have trailed by as many as nine points tonight. Cut that deficit down to four as Lattimore went down. Katie Meyer out. Talking with her as well, trying to comfort her as best as she can. It's unfortunate because the trainer is doing that ACL test there on the baseline right now. Good to see her.
least rise up and be helped to her feet as best as possible. It's eight points, three and a half rebounds, but of course the feelings in the arena overriding that in this moment. As a coach, how do you try to get your team to respond to an injury and obviously an emotional moment like that? You just try to focus on the here and now. And I, I mean, if you notice why Katie Meyer was with Lattimore, her rest of her staff was with the players on the floor. And so you're talking about what they're gonna do next. You try to move them forward, not to remember or think about what has happened, but move them physically forward. Lattimore under the rim. Ball went out of bounds. It's a turnover, the 11th turnover for Miami. Michigan gets it back. And Miami going really small now. Jasmine Roberts at the four. Can Michigan exploit this down low? Cameron Williams hoping to do so, but she stepped out of bounds. Now the Wolverines have turned it over 10 times as well. It's been a bit of a sloppy start. Another motion set, Cavender. Sizes up, Felia. Cavender in traffic and a foul call. So I said Miami's going smaller. If you're going to go smaller, spread the floor, try to get the bigs of Michigan out of the paint and move without the ball. Cavender cuts into the lane, fortunate to draw the foul. Well, the Canes in the bonus, the next foul. And you want to talk about free throw shooting. Haley Cavender, pretty much the best there is. Why? Record holder at 97% for a season. One for two there, her first miss this fall. At least three equal opportunities. Yeah. Turnover on the other end. I mean, she made 109 out of 112 free throws at Fresno State in that one season. That's a record, 97%, with six of six before those two there. But Roy, you didn't talk about those in any of that stretch <laughs> or the six for six part. More importantly, it's a one possession game again. Miami right back in it after trailing by as many as nine. Dwyer's been a spark off the bench. And she was fouled, Kaiser Klipter. Timeout on the floor in a brand new ball game in Coral Gables. Free throws coming in a three-point affair. ACC Big Ten Challenge. Is now in Florida State. Handled Wisconsin 92 to 87. So tally another victory for the ACC. Now a six to five advantage here in this year's ACC Big Ten Challenge. The last one, of course, last of 15 that we've seen. You need eight to clinch. The other two games taking place over on ESPN2, NC State and Iowa. Caitlin Clark is going off, but NC State with the lead in that one. And Georgia Tech currently with the lead as well. So that game taking place at Michigan State. And we will see how those two games unfold. Certainly neither one finished just yet. Dwyer off the mark. The lead down to two. 7-0 run for the U, and there's a steal. And just like that, we're tied. Dwyer providing energy off the bench. And Kim barnes Rico did not like that last sequence. A technical foul has just been called on Michigan's head coach. And Miami which is yet to lead in this game, will have a chance to grab the advantage for the first time at the line. Yeah. 
And KBA not yet concluding her conversation with this veteran officiating crew. Kane's in front for the first time. Boy, honestly, I was wondering why Leah Brown is even messing with Dwyer. Like, give it to someone else. I, I think any time as a former point guard, you don't want that smaller defender on you. And Dwyer's just getting in her, so she's almost using the height advantage because of how high Brown's dribble is against her right now. Well, what a big sequence. Not only do you get the turnover, coach gets teed up, Kavanagh makes both free throws, and then Miami gives it right back. Well, those are the kinds of mistakes you can't make if you're trying to upset a top 20 team. Ball assuredness. You want to have two hands on the ball. You want to make sure you are moving the ball where you want it to go. Unfortunate turnover for Miami. 28-26, now an 11-0 run in favor of the U. And a foul called. It was a late whistle. Spearman, the guilty party. Crockett got away with that pass. She was a second late trying to get it into Kaiser. Unfortunately, Spearman was called for coming around the back. I think that's the right call. In your opinion, what was Kim Barzarico so upset about, thinking that Dwyer was being too physical or foul, perhaps, in the backcourt? I, I got to believe that she thought that Brown was fouled when Dwyer picked her pocket. Look clean from our perspective. Mid-range is there. Leah Brown tied at 28. And that'll stop the 11-0 run. Michigan has turned it over six times in the last three and a half minutes. Miami has ratcheted up that pressure. And Kane's turned it over here. Well, the stats are similar. The styles are not. And Miami's second quarter has equalized Michigan's first. Nolan off the mark. And Kim barnes Rico said to her team today, don't just settle for that quick three because that's what Miami wants. Can Miami convert here? And unfortunately, Kavanaugh kills her dribble on the baseline. Brown to the deck. And the jump ball gives it back to Michigan. Well, Cavender got caught right under the basket, was quickly double teamed. And then the held possession. Uh, Christy, this has become quite an entertaining game in our second quarter, has it not? Well, I'm looking for Brown right now to really try to take over. That's all we heard today is just how competitive she is. She gets picked, her coach gets a technical, and since then, four points for Brown, as well as a big defensive stand. Brown in double figures. She's got 12. Wolverines back in front. You called that one. Roberts top of the key. Williams still needs to get going. And a turnover. And who rotated to stop the drive? Kaiser. Now you pointed to Kaiser a few minutes ago. Just talked about her play to me off air, defensively, on offense. Her development as a leading scorer and rebounder for Michigan. Such a versatile weapon. Crockett attacking and finishing. And a timeout going to be called by Katie Meyer. And she's claiming that a Michigan player boxed out a Miami defender to clear the path for Alyssa Crockett's layup. Oh, boy. you got to love the intensity by both of these head <laughs> coaches, and you pray that their teams are going to feed off this intensity. But I can't say enough about Michigan's half-court defense at this point in the game. And what Katie Meyer is arguing about is that she feels like Emily Kaiser sealed off Spearman, and I think Coach Meyer's got a valid argument That's on that exactly one. exactly what she did. Wolverines get away with it. High angle look reveals the true story again. And this is subtle, Roy. Spearman just being a freshman. Had she tried to fight around it, I think it would have been more obvious to the ref. Unfortunately, she's just kind of going with it and didn't really go against the grain. And I think if she had, Kaiser would have got called for that. Such an interesting game. Both teams shooting 50% or better. We've only seen one made three. And in fact, Miami has yet to attempt a three-point shot in this first half. 
was the last time he called a basketball game and could say that. The Canes are in it, trailing by just four. Cavender, well short. And the rebound ripped away by Leah Brown. Tapped out by Spearman. Now we told you this is the last game of the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Wouldn't you know it, we come full circle. The first game of this event back in 2007, Michigan played at Miami. And the Wolverines won that night 65-50 to here in Coral Gables. You put on your historian hat here this evening as well. I've been saving that little nugget for you. <laughs> Roberts, top of the key. That's an air ball. The first three-point attempt for the Canes fails to draw iron. And Michigan will concede the three to Miami all evening long because it keeps them in rebounding position and keeps the ball in front of them. You can feel the Wolverines with momentum again. Brown, the jump stop and the finish with a mid-range. She's got 14. What's that old saying, don't poke the bear? <laughs> Now a 6-0 burst by the Wolverines. Spearman at position for a moment. Cavender backs it out. Here comes Dwyer. It'll stay with Miami. 94 seconds to go in the first. Entertaining half of basketball. I think... Miami, this out of bounds execution is really critical. They've struggled to score in the half court, against the half court defense, so see if you can get some easy points out of your out of bounds execution. Eight nothing run for Michigan, and now free throws coming for Miami's Jasmine Roberts. Great read by Roberts. She saw that her defender was overplaying. She cuts back door. Great find by Ari Vets. And Christy, we go back to the moment that occurred right in front of us after the technical free throws were made. Miami had possession. And a careless turnover on the inbounds. Michigan has since responded with an 8-0 run. Well, you know, one commonality between both these coaches today is they talked about the lack of experience in big games. We know what both these teams did in postseason a year ago, but basically there's three players on each team that have a lot of minutes that they've logged over the years. And why I say that is young players don't always value every possession. That Miami turnover was a young turnover. You got to know that momentum's on your side. Don't do anything to give it back to Michigan. Two free throws by Roberts. Lead back to four. Big possession here at the end of the half. Browns had the hot hand. Off the mark. Spearman, a great rebound. Dwyer, always on the go. Cavender. Spearman lost it. Canes get it back in a fresh 20. But if you're a Miami fan, you've got to be ecstatic because you see the potential of Spearman on those last two possessions, the defensive rebound, and then to keep the ball alive on offense. Roberts inside, back to the line. So Jasmine Roberts, a spark here at the charity stripe at the end of the half. So Crockett picks up her second foul in as many possessions. Roberts 67% at the line, but two for two tonight. Chance to cut it to one possession game. Hey, don't forget we've seen some amazing fans across the ACC, and now we need your help. This winter, ACC Network wants you to experience each, each sport from your perspective. So snap a pic, take a video, tag it with hashtag all the devotion posted on your social media account. You just may see it on ACCN. One of two at the line. The battle for the loose ball goes out back to the Wolverines. I want to see Christy Thomas cut a hashtag all the devotion and see what you come up with. You beat me to the punch because I'm like, I already know that your picture's in there. <laughs> but, you know, we talked about the missed opportunity for Miami. But if I'm Katie Meyer, I'm only down three with my two leading scores on the bench. Destiny Harden's hardly played. 
in this first half, you got to be ecstatic about what your team could possibly do, especially when Dwyer can disrupt an offense. Feel you bringing the ball up the court that time against Dwyer nearly forced the steal, as you said. And Brown, offensive foul. Cleared out with the elbow. Energy, intensity, emotions are high. Leah Brown just trying to make something happening. Good job by Cavender to keep moving her feet and wall up. And then just draws that contact to make the call. Get the call, I should say. One second differential between the clocks. The Canes can essentially play for the final shot of the half. We've got some drama yet to unfold in our second half tonight in Coral Gables. Offensive foul. And it'll Spearman threw the shoulder down. And it goes back to Michigan. And you know who took that charge? Emily Kaiser. Stays down, walls up. That's a tough call. It's a very tough call. That's a tough, tough call. call now that I'm watching it again. <laughs> Might be better acting by Kaiser than great defense. Shot clock is off. Lead is three. Feel you with a spin. Miami harassing every Hello. passing lane. Williams inside, missed it. Kane's got to go. Here comes Dwyer. About the only shot she didn't make in this first half. In a three-point game, 20 minutes in, Christy, this has been fun. Absolutely. I can't wait for the second half. I'm eager to see the adjustments that both head coaches make. But most importantly, I know they're saying, take care of the basketball. Leah Brown with 14. What does it mean when your two leading scorers in Destiny Harden and Jalea Williams failed to score a single point in the first half and also committed four turnovers and you only trail by three as you look at our game summary? It means it bodes well for Miami if you can get those two young ladies going offensively. And I think the key is for them not to try to force it here immediately. Harden, baseline J, no, and the rebound by who else? Leah Brown. Williams outside, feel you off the bounce. And a big step in traffic, couldn't get the roll. And back to Miami. Well, I think that's something that Michigan does so well. They use counters. You'll defend the dribble penetration, and if you're too tight to contest the shot, they're gonna step by you with that step through. Unfortunately, feel you couldn't finish. Now, Wolverines have been in some interesting games already this year, trailing late, rallying. It's teams like top 25 Baylor into that game on a 20 to five run after trailing by five with five minutes to go. Plenty of firepower, but they have a three point lead so far tonight. Cavender, no, racing to get it back and she was fouled. And that's one thing Miami has done a good job of today. First shot hasn't gone. They have stayed with the plays, extending plays to try to get points on the board. Second foul, Maddie Nolan. First team foul here in the third. Williams to trigger. You're just tuning in. Tasha Lattimore went out what appeared to be a right knee injury in the second quarter. Brown. Filia outside to Kaiser who connects. And that started with Filia getting behind the defense and transition D. Miami then scrambled, Kaiser left open. Lead back to five, Kaiser has seven. Harden was wide open and an offensive foul called before the shot. And that's why Harden is wide open. The area vets over penetrated there. Kaiser steps in and draws that foul. It's the third time that she has stepped in today to draw an offensive foul. Area vets with the turnover. Kane's applying more pressure.
Maddie Nolan just asked Leah Brown if she needed to come up and help him. <laughs> Brown goes, no, I got it. <laughs> Get a little chippy. There was contact. Jaleah Williams didn't like it. That's her second. And Leah Brown just does a great job of going into Williams. And he gets to make that call. Well, both head coaches heated in that second quarter. Things got a little chippy. Things have stayed chippy as Williams gets called for a foul down low. You're not talking about between us. You looked at me right when you said that and away from the action. <laughs> but Michigan turns it over. Kim barnes Rico didn't like that. Nothing chippy between us. <laughs> Williams, still without a point, was blocked, came down with it, and that's a traveling violation. And what you talked about, Julia Williams' offensive struggles tonight, she can't get to the rim off the bounce. That's the difference. You have to credit Michigan's team defense in getting her to settle for pull-up jumpers. Michigan had an eight-point lead after the first. Miami made it a one-possession game at halftime. Only two points have been scored so far in our third quarter. Those by Michigan. Five-point advantage with possession. Brown, free throw line, and it's there. 16 on the board for Leah Brown. And we'll talk about how Leah Brown's not that true point guard, but the advantage is the 6-1. She gets a step on her defender, and she can elevate. Destiny Harden connects. So Harden has her first bucket. Back to a five-point lead. Brown short, Cavender the rebound. She'll push it. Harden, bit of a heat check and it's all net. 38-36 in the first three of the night for Miami. Boy, Cavender told Harden to trail her at half court. She said trail. Setting up that pass for the three. Feel you. The bounce pass to Williams. No. And saved by Miami. That was Harden. Shea Dwyer. Harden wants it and takes it. In and out. And that was for the lead. Everybody that's a Miami fan just groaned because that ball was halfway down. How did that not drop? Williams, it was poked away by Pindande. Kaiser was bumped, and that's a good whistle. Kaiser has the size advantage on Harden down low, and this was the shot a moment ago. Harden trailing in transition. Credit Cavender because she knew she had her in the trail told her to trail, give the space, and knocks it down. Well, you go back to her game winner against Louisville in the ACC tournament last year, Destiny Harden, gaining more confidence from that. They need more of her scoring. Pull off this upset tonight. One more free throw for Kaiser. She's got eight. Averaging 20 points per game so far this season. And now with nine this evening. Cavender thought about it. She was a second late, recognizing that she was open. Yeah, feel you close quickly. Harden between the legs, lost the handle. Michigan comes away with it. Back to Dwyer on the errant pass. Cavender open, quick trigger. And a foul called. Spearman from behind. Grab the forearm. Now this pace is starting to favor Miami. The up and down, quicker possessions of the ball. Can it continue? And Christy Spearman just picked up her third foul. That becomes critical with Lattimore. You have to believe out for the rest of this game with a knee injury. How physical can she be against Kaiser and even Brown inside at times? 
Three-pointer short, that was Camp Schrader. Harden trailing again. Here's Dwyer baseline, the jump stop, and the finish! Well, she had something to say after that layup as well. She has energy in a bottle for the Hurricanes. Dwyer in double figures with 11. The left-handed layup by Emily Kaiser is good. Just steady. Kaiser's just so good, whether it's off the bounce, catch and shoot. She knows how to use her body to create leverage to get to the rim. Not to mention the defense we've seen at times tonight on all parts of the floor. Kavanagh against Brown. Brown with the height advantage. Area Vets goes to work. Left-handed layup. Back to a two-point game. And that is so subtle, but I love that Area Vets went to the left because it kept the bigs to her right side, giving her that free lane to the basket. Undefeated Michigan. Leading by just two. Kaiser, no. Tap to Dwyer and a chance to tie or grab the lead. Shea Dwyer. I don't know how she got it to Spearman, but the shot was blocked under the rim. Cam Schrader inside Emily Kaiser, and that was too easy. 44-40. Kaiser now in double figures with 11. Michigan calls a timeout. Under four to go and another entertaining quarter. And a good one brewing here at Coral Gables. week at ESPN when we partner with the V Foundation to highlight the urgent need for cancer research. This is a game-changing research that helps save lives. You can join the fight against cancer by visiting v.org slash donate. And don't forget, 100% of your donation goes directly to cancer research. I'm Roy Philpott with Christy thomas Cuddy As a cancer survivor, you understand the importance of giving this week and what it means to help provide those funds for that research. Absolutely. I mean, as a former coach going through V Week, you knew it was important. But as a cancer survivor now, you realize just how much those donations matter to the research. Early detection and your giving helps us save lives. Well said. 341 to go in the third and a timeout on the floor. Gables, Christy Thomas, Cuddy, Roy Philpot. It is V Week. We mentioned that going out to break. And Christy, you discovered you had cancer just in a regular physical back in 2017. Understanding early detection is critical, right? Absolutely. And that's the part of the donations because not everyone has the ability to get those tests. And I can't say enough of just how lucky I was. The doctors at Emory caught my cancer early, full recovery, and I'm grateful. And why am I grateful? Great doctors who had the research behind them that knew how to treat my cancer. And that's why I say thank you to anyone who's ever given. Thank you to those who are going to continue to give and have given. We can beat this. And every time I hear Coach Jim Valvano's speech, I get goosebumps because I know that his legacy continues to on through every survivor's life. Yeah, you know that question that people pose at times, if you could talk to, interview, have lunch with anybody in the history of humanity, dead or alive, who would it be? My answer always is Jimmy V, Jim Valvano. Incredible run, Albuquerque, 1983, went into the national championship. That was a hard foul. And of course, an ESPN commentator after that, passing away in the early 90s. And his legacy indeed lives on. Thank you for sharing that story, too. Four fouls on Spearman. With Lattimore out, that becomes even bigger. 
Kaiser at the line shooting two. She's got 13 points. It's really started to come to life offensively in this third quarter. But you just can't say enough of her impact on this game. Defensively, her setting screens. I, this young lady's the entire package in my, in my opinion. 13, four boards, three dimes for 33 in blue. Emily Kaiser and a well-deserved breather from Kim barnes Arinko, her head coach. Lead back to five. It's been as great as nine points tonight. Kane's led by two at one juncture. That's an offensive foul on Destiny Harden. And her third. That, that's a really unfortunate call against Harden because she's just trying to cut, and two players are just moving at the same time and hit one another. That's exactly what happened. Critical, 2.30, left in the third. Wide open look, that was Cam Schrader for three. Enormous bucket. Just her sixth made three in 25 attempts this season. And the lead suddenly at eight points. When Harden appears to be shaken up. Karen Prado and Lisa Green talking things over, and now entire crew will have a word with each other. Boy, and Harden hit the deck hard before the three-pointer. Well, they're looking at Williams right now because she kind of cleared Harden to the floor, but I got to credit Camp Trader. Dribble penetration went low. She wrapped, which is why she was so wide open. We'll take a look at that last sequence. The contact was made, I thought, before the shot was taken. You can see the contact by Williams on Harden on the block. Now, that first look, I didn't think there was anything intentional with it. And this is unfortunate for Harden. I mean, she just got clocked, but I didn't feel like she led with it. The arm just came down in what appeared to be a natural motion. Yeah. Although it was with authority. It still hurts. Yes. For sure. So in your mind, you're not willing to add anything onto that. I, you know, this is what's hard in this day and age with post players. Like, how do you teach them to be athletic if we're basically pinning their elbows to their sides? Because that, that, that's basically, she's just moving. And it, it is very unfortunate for Harden that it comes across her face. That's, I mean, and there is no intent. Like, I know that by officials. Oh, and Harden is actually bleeding as well, unfortunately. I do think this deserves an additional moment to try to decipher what the right call is, especially Absolutely. at this point of the game. And I know there are viewers at home like, let's play, whatever. I love the officials are collaborating and wanting to get this right. It, it doesn't feel like this is a waste of time. No. And as physical as this game has been, you need to get it right also. Your pardon's okay. I, I can't say that enough. We'll get the official indication as well. Katie Lukanich. They will be making this an intentional foul on the play against Michigan. Since it occurred before the shot was taken, does that impact the scoring on that play? Partner, that's a valid question. Right now, nothing has come off the board. First thought was that would not impact the scoring, and we just confirmed that the shot still counts. 
The intentional foul remains. And that was Cameron Williams that was rotating near the painted area, and the arm came down on Destiny Harden. I was just watching the interaction with Katie Miner, and she just dropped her shoulders in frustration because I think that's what she was arguing, that the shot shouldn't go down. Well, free throws. for Cavender. Michigan in the midst of a 6-0 run in the last 97 seconds. Senior from Arizona buries the first. She'll get one more. Four for five at the line tonight. One of the top free throw shooters in the history of college basketball. Calmly trains a pair, Miami with possession. And the advantage of the time that took for the officials is training staff for Miami's got Harden ready to play. Cavender against Maddie Nolan. Shea Dwyer. Great ball movement by Miami. Ten on the shot clock, plenty of time for Cavender. She was tripped, it looked like, for a moment, maybe over her own two feet. No whistle. Cam Schrader inside to Williams. The 5'6", Dwyer grabs a rebound. And Harden traveled. She knew it, tried to get away with it. Could not keep that left foot on the deck. It's such a fine line for Miami right now. You can tell they're trying to play with better pace offensively, but you can't make things happen. You've got to read what the defense is giving you. And I can't say enough about the half-court defense of Michigan. Every time it seems like Miami gets a lane, gets a step, the team defense rotates to shut it down. 23 turnovers for the Hurricanes. And a foul inside, Pindande. And Michigan in the bonus. That will be her fourth. So Pendante with four, Spearman with four, no Lattimore. Michigan already had a significant size advantage. It's even more pronounced now. And Williams back on the court has still yet to score tonight. Our Wednesday's featured women's basketball contest right here on ACC Network and the Apples with Kentley, number nine, Virginia Tech. Travel to Chestnut Hill to battle Boston College. It's the first ACC matchup for both squads. Coverage starts at 6 Eastern on Wednesday right here on ACC Network. Lead back to eight. Big possession for Miami. Spearman back on the floor, the runner. Dwyer. Williams, Nolan has it. Two point blank opportunities. Here's a three. Feel you know that would have been huge. Cavender running, three on two if Miami hurries. Williams, the crossover. Spearman, up and in. Shot block is off. Brown looking for Kaiser. Two seconds. Maddie Nolan. Rainbow three and it drops. 
What a shot. Well, when you need a bucket, most importantly, get the shot off. Matty Nolan. Before this one, at least, concluding. And Miami out of the timeout, going to that 1-3-1 one, one zone defense, just trying to mix it up right now against Michigan's offense. NC State coming back to defeat Iowa and Caitlin Clark. Final tonight, 94-81. Challenge that started way back in 07. Has just one more game left. And it's the one you're watching right now. Canes get a big stop. Hey, I love it. They show the 1-3-1 one, one after like two passes. They matched up and went straight up man-to-man. -man. And Dwyer was fouled at the elbow. So Maddie Nolan picks up her third. No foul trouble certainly mounting for the Canes. And Dante and Spearman both with four. Spearman currently on the court. Miami doing, I'm sorry, Michigan does such a great job getting through screens, avoiding contact so that they are on the catch every time. Cavender mid range. Big Except shot. That time. <laughs> 53-46. Cavender with 13. Now, Katie Meyer told us earlier today she was expecting Haley Cavender to be more aggressive. She has the green light. We've seen that this evening. Off the steal. Williams, a bounce pass to Spearman. And an offensive foul. Williams picks up the personal. Turnovers have been a major issue tonight. 25, in fact. Christy. And, and credit Michigan's defense. We know that they're not high pressure, but they cut the driving lanes down. They have high hands. They disrupt in their own way, and it has really created havoc for the Miami half-court offense this evening. Lead down to seven. Dwyer nearly forced a turnover and then push. Camp Schrader to the ground. Well, we've talked about how chippy this game has become in the second half and clearly illustrated once again. Just really unfortunate. Dwyer's trying to be aggressive here. Great, I agree with the call by the official going through the body there. They get tangled up. Never any room for that shoving. Intentional foul called on Shea Dwyer. After the personal was called. Put Leah Brown at the line. And she'll get one more. Now some critical calls and moments where it felt like momentum was teetering between both teams. This one goes against Miami. Michigan retains possession after the free throws on the intentional foul. You know what, something small, but you gotta watch. That's already three fouls for Miami in the quarter. We know in that first quarter. And then in the third, how Michigan feasting from the free throw line. You gotta give your defense a chance to play without committing the fouls. Jalea Williams just picked up her fourth. And Dante with four, Spearman with four as well. And Dwyer. We just checked out. We'll go back in for Miami's leading score on the season, but it was scoreless so far tonight in Jalea Williams. Well, you wonder if the Canes have one more run in them. Look at the rotation. Leah Brown 
How beautiful of a possession was that? That is team basketball. Every player was willing to make the extra pass for the highest percentage look, and then Leah Brown finally just said, enough of this, I'm taking it into the paint. Spearman was pushed. No. And they will line. say she stepped out. Trapping pressure now from the Canes. Feel you traveled. I've been waiting to see Miami do more of the trapping pressure and the ball handlers didn't commit that foul, but you realize it sped Philia up, and that's why she got called for that travel. Wolverines with their largest lead at 11. Kim barnes Rico sense to the importance of these next couple of minutes. I'd love to see some two-man action with Cavern Hard in here. Uh, it's Michigan. Well, I gotta give our officials just kudos. This has not been an easy game to officiate by any means. Fourth on Camp Schrader. She'll quickly check out. Maddie Nolan back on the floor. It has been physical. It has been intense. We've seen multiple plot twists tonight. Really for both sides. Hard oh, puts man. it up and in. That's a big basket. Lead down to nine. And Cavender with a quick foul. Now the team fouls mounting up. And guess what? Michigan at the line for the rest of the game. It's definitely not what you want if you're a Miami fan. I mean, this is a team that shoots. Michigan, a team that shoots almost 80% from the free throw line. This is what gave them the lead in the first quarter. And now I feel like for the rest of this game, this is where they're going to get the majority of the points. Feel you 67% of the strike. Second leading score this season for the Maize and Blue. Two big ones there. And the lead back to 11. Spearman's working down low, and they haven't seen her. Hard spots yep. her for the easy two. You got to reward your post players when they're working that hard in the paint to give you a straight line rule. Credit Spearman for doing the work before the ball even got to her. She's got six. Third dime from Harden. Michigan trying to improve to 8 0. There goes Kaiser inside. Emily Kaiser with 18. If I'm Michigan, I just keep feeding Kaiser against the freshman post player. Dwyer double team, Harden a quick trigger. And Nolan controls the rebound. How about the layup and the control of Felia under the rim? Michigan with its largest lead at 13. Credit Leah Brown, the 6-1 point guard, knew as soon as she crossed half court, she had Filia for the first slam. Since Michigan on the road here at the ACC Big Ten Challenge, final game of the night, final game, the history of this event, Miami's turnovers have been a major story of season I-26. So has Emily Kaiser with 15 second half points and approaching her average almost quietly and methodically once again, Christy. Well, Roy, I don't know if there's an Emily Kaiser fan club. If not, I'm the founding member because I am beyond impressed. It's one thing to watch her on film, but the little things, the subtle things that she does to make her team better, her ability to set screens, for them to run an offense through her as a passer, and I can't say enough about her defense here this evening. Schweier throws it in the backcourt, over and back. Turnover number 27. 
Well, you talk about Kaiser's development. Her production has almost doubled since last season, and it comes at a critical time when Nas Hillman moves on. First round draft pick of the Atlanta Dream, number 15 overall. Think about her All-American season last year, leading Michigan to the Elite Eight for the first time. And here comes Kaiser, just waiting for her time to shine, and she has well, she's really done it this year. Well, I go back five years ago, Michigan had a dominant post player in Haley Combs, and then you have Nas, Nas Hillman, and you got to think the entire Big Ten has just been waiting for this season without a Nas, Nas Hillman, and then yet, here you go, Emily Kaiser, having her moment in the low post. Maddie Nolan for three. Lead swells to 16. Hard launching, big time response. Hard now in double figures with 10. Last year, Destiny Harden had 15 total made threes. Already to this early part of the season, she has 13. And shooting 40% from deep. Graduate student out of Chicago. Halfway through the fourth. Five to shoot. Brown behind the back. Leah Brown rejected by Dwyer. And a late whistle. A foul called on 13 and White. Dwyer was doing so good at just moving her feet. I'm not sure why she left her feet to contest Brown on that one. And she's lucky she didn't get teed up again. 5-6 on 6-1. And it'll be Brown at the line in her 20 points. You mentioned this veteran officiating crew keeping things in check in the second half. And last few minutes, the whistle has been right there when it's needed to be. To make sure things don't get out of hand. Cavender off the foot of Leah Brown. And, and we talked about it just during the break. Like, just why did this? Why was this game so difficult to, to officiate? You have a lot of offensive players initiating contact. A lot of people flailing. And I think this crew's done a great job in a really tough situation this evening. And Dante. Off the rebound was fouled. Now this Michigan team, I think, proving on the verge of 8-0. No, still four minutes and change remaining. That Nas Hillman gone so far this year. Not necessarily no problem. They've just found players to come in and almost by committee replace that All-American production. Well, you know, I asked Kim Martin to Rico today, knowing that you lost Hillman, knowing that you needed to adjust both offense and defense, do you feel like you're further ahead or behind of where you thought you would be? And she, I mean, you almost saw the smile because she said. Well, first oh. she told you it was a great question. <laughs> no one ever says that. But I, I love the response, though, because she said, you know, so many naysayers that her team heard the outside noise and they took it personally and that players have worked on their individual game. And so, yes, you lose. I, I consider Nas Hillman a generational player. And yet, in some ways, I think this team might be more dangerous this season because different players can beat you on any given night. Maybe the dime of the night dropped by Cavender inside of Pendande moments ago. And the physical play continues as Kaiser, right at the elbow, came crashing down. <laughs> Destiny Harden picked up her fourth. Kaiser at the line. Five for six. Two points away from her season average. Don't forget about the conference championship Saturday lineup right here on ACC Network. Coverage from the Queen City begins with ACC PM Friday at 4 Eastern. Continues at 9 with the huddle and then Saturday, a two-hour pregame spectacular with the huddle crew kicks off at 6 Eastern. 
After the game, of course, head back to ACC Network for a complete breakdown with coach and player interviews. Clemson and North Carolina. And of course, you can always watch on the ESPN app if you are out and about. Dwyer, a wraparound layup attempt, and she was clipped. And that was a play call from the bench, knowing that my is going to be out in the passing lane. Dwyer cuts back door. And we, we talk about the foul trouble of Miami. And yes, they've had to sit, but I, I can't help but wonder how much that's affected their offensive execution because there hasn't been just this fluid amount of time to develop the chemistry in this game. Because, yes, there's chemistry in game as well, game to game against matchups. And unfortunately for Miami today, they've just been at the beck and call of the officials in terms of who Katie Meyer could put on the floor due to all the foul trouble. Track down, out to Harden for three. 70 to 59, 3.30 to go. And a 10 second violation gives it back to Miami. Miami says not, this game is not over by any means just yet. The ACC Big Ten Challenge lives on for a bit longer <laughs> perhaps. It's only fitting. And we told you earlier, it started back in 2007. Guess who were the first two teams to battle in this event? It was Michigan, it was Miami, and it was right here. Wolverines won it that night. The Cades turn it over. That's costly. The runner. Brown floats it up and in. Just seems like every time Michigan has needed something on the offensive end, Leah Brown has stepped up. Cavender off the mark, tracked down by Harden. Leah Brown with 24 points tonight to lead all scores. Less than three to play. Harden. Dwyer. Dwyer gets it back. And Crockett comes away with a rebound. Multiple opportunities in the last couple of minutes for Miami to chip away at this lead a little bit more. And Felia, aggressive. Miami hasn't given in by any means. They are doing what they can, except seeing the ball go through the hole. And you thought that would be a problem tonight with Michigan's size. It certainly was in that first quarter. Michigan built that eight-point lead. Give credit to the Canes, they came back, had the lead. Too much firepower for the Maze in blue. And Donde just fouled out. Spearman with four, Williams with four as well. And not to mention Destiny Harden. And the commonality for the most part is that those are the bigs for Miami. Can't say it enough. With Lattimore going down with a knee injury, they don't have a lot of depth there, and they've just been handcuffed all day because of their foul trouble. 12 points tonight for Felia. Five short of her season average. She also did a lot of the dirty work this evening as well, bringing the ball up the court against that full court pressure. Seen it multiple times. Cavender, sweet finish. 15 on the board. And I like that that time Cavender put the ball on the floor. Last couple of trips been a lot of three-point attempts to start the offense. Felia ahead of the pack. Blocked from behind by Dwyer. How did she get there for that one? Well, the smallest player on the floor is playing big here in this fourth quarter. You mentioned the energy. She's been vocal, aggressive. Kickball will keep it on this end. Going to go up with that one. But Dwyer not giving up on the play, runs it down and times it so well as Filia goes up for that layup. Cavender's got to go, lays it up and in. He's got 17, Haley Cavender. Harden's ready to press. She's ready to hand the ball to anybody.
Nolan fell down in a timeout called by Kim Barnes Rico. O'Dwyer has left it all out on the court tonight. I mean, she's had a hand in every Miami rally. Seems like the majority of the turnovers and steals she's helped create. Not to mention, she's got eight rebounds tonight. Four of those offensive. The smallest player on the floor getting on the glass. The three steals. and I mean, they have her listed at 5'6". I think that's generous, but I think it also shows you the impact a player just plays hard can have on a game. Well, we talked with Kim barnes Rico. We mentioned Nas Hillman earlier in this quarter. I said, Coach, does Nas still keep in touch with you guys? She said, absolutely. In fact, she's got her eyes set on becoming the next head coach at Michigan. <laughs> I said, really? She said, oh, yeah. Nas, if you're watching tonight, coach is aware of your intentions. All-American, number 15 overall pick, WNBA draft. Had a great rookie campaign. But Nas has been doing some broadcasting first. Doing some work for the Big Ten Network. Spot up Jay is there for Leah Brown. She's got 26. Michigan a different team this year, but still a lot to deal with. Dwyer was fouled, fading away on the layup attempt. Well, Miami's got an interesting schedule coming up. In 10 days, they'll welcome rival Florida down here to Coral Gables. ACC play heats up as well. You got North Florida coming up next. Miami made it to the NCAA tournament last year. Roster turnover, of course. Won a game against South Florida. Not easy to do against Jose Fernandez's team. We know that. Then lost to the eventual national champions. And Katie Meyer's going to get some help later this year as well with the great recruiting she's done as some of her players start to gain help. Well, and I think if you've followed Miami in the past, you know that this is a team, especially because of the defensive pressure they put on, that gels. And, and credit to her, she knows how to have them peaking at the right time, and that is March. And we've seen glimpses today of what this team is capable of. Turnovers still get under control. That is just playing together, not getting too sped up. And then I think the same can be said about Michigan. As good as they have looked today, it's first. Again, every coach is looking for 40 minutes put together. And that's the one thing we didn't see consistently out of Michigan. And look out when that happens. Well, the Wolverines spent a couple of days down in Florida. The Gulf Coast Classic won that, came back and beat Baylor. Went back home to Ann Arbor for about 36 hours, then came back for this game. And look what's coming Sunday, the Big Ten opener against Northwestern and their defense, which is always a headache for anybody that the Cats encounter, the way they like to swarm the basketball. And then you circle that date on December 20th. Deja Kelly, North Carolina, their explosive offense against this Michigan team. That is a game. It's not a part of the ACC Big Ten Challenge. But that could be a look at maybe the second weekend in the NCAA tournament come March. I, I've now had both these teams. I think they match up extremely well. I know I'm going to be watching that game. I will be as well. One last possession for Michigan. Williams. Somehow gets it back. Dwyer for three. What a win this will prove to be for the Wolverines on the road, improving to 8-0, ranked in the top 20, and bound to move up in the AP top 25 after another impressive win, Christy. Hats off to Michigan. I am beyond impressed. It's one thing to watch a team on film, but Kaiser's even better in person. I feel like... Philia is even more explosive in person than I saw. And when you have a competitor leading your team, like you do in Leah Brown, I really think you have so much potential to really turn some heads this season. 26 points tonight for Leah Brown, 20 for Emily Kaiser. Philia added 12. That was the bulk of the offensive damage for KBA's club. Fifth overall meeting between these two. 
Series was tied at two wins apiece before tonight as the conclusion of the ACC Big Ten Challenge has reached us. And for some reason, we have a timeout. I have a feeling Kim Bartorillo didn't want to mess with the press, so she called timeout. I'm assuming to advance the ball, although I don't see what, oh no, yeah, to advance the ball, the official has the ball in her hand. Yeah, and you know what, boy, the thing, it's still early in the season. These are still teaching moments. Great point. And the one thing consistently in this entire four games that Michigan has shown in the state of Florida is that they are a really good fourth quarter team. That'll do it. The ACC Big Ten Challenge comes to a close. And the final game won by the Big Ten's Michigan. The Atlantic Coast Conference wins the challenge this year, securing the eight victories needed. Katie Meyer, Kim barnes Rico meeting at midcourt. Entertaining game tonight, an emotional game tonight with multiple plot twists and just a precursor of the games to come later this month. Well, Michigan wins this game. I feel like both ball clubs.